I really try hard to be a positive Patricia as opposed to a negative Nancy on this channel regarding life and careers and investment banking. But there's always two sides to a coin and in an effort to be fully transparent and to show all aspects of my previous occupation, today I'm gonna to talk about regrets I have being an investment banking analyst. And this is less about regrets I have in terms of what I did as an investment banking analyst, as in if I went back, I wish I could have done these things better as an investment banking analyst. These are the reasons why I wish I wasn't an investment banking analyst for a year and a half. Number one, and to kick things off with the biggest buzzword associated to banking, the number one reason why people engage in banking, at least in my opinion, money. Ironically, I think banking ruins your expectations, your ideals, your wishes and dreams that revolve around money. The term golden handcuffs probably came out of some banking related individual, probably a banker. For those of you not aware, golden handcuffs refers to the principle, the idea that you can't let go, you are locked into a position that pays you so much and parts of it may suck, but you can't let it go. You can't remove yourself from the position because you are locked in by these golden standards set by high income, high wealth generating jobs. And even though others may offer higher work-life balances, better virtues, something that you're passionate about, these theoretical golden handcuffs don't allow you to leave the position. As an investment banking analyst coming right out of school at age 21, 22, you're making more money than you can dream of. You're making more money than a lot of real adults, fully grown adults that have been in their respective jobs for years, sometimes decades. And if you come out of school at a young age in a booming city with a lot to do, with that much money, it gets to your head. I think it takes a very special person for that to not get to their head. I'm definitely not one of those special individuals. And even as I transitioned and I look back at the role and I compare and contrast the role that I have now to the role that I had in banking, thinking about the compensation, comparing people that are ahead of me that are in their late 20s that are in banking versus those that are not, money has to be a factor that pops up in your mind and you definitely have times I think that you miss that income. You have what ifs about if I continued on that track in a role that is quite possibly in terms of stability and secureness, a pretty good payoff between compensation and years of experience. Second thing that I regret about being an investment banking analyst, starting my career in investment banking, it has to do with personality and state of mind circumstances. The work anxiety and the short fusedness that comes from being in banking, I think will take a long time to wear off of me as I've exited banking. The work anxiety, I think, isn't just unique to banking. I think a lot of people have work anxiety. I think a lot of people have anxiety in general a lot due to a wide variety of factors, but I think especially in banking, because you feel like you're on call all the time, you lack sleep, you're in very high intensity situations where everyone's a perfectionist, everyone is very type A. Everything that you approach you approach with some level of anxiety. And I think there's arguments to be made that anxiety isn't always a bad thing. Having a subtle level of anxiety allows you to tackle things with perfection. And I think it allows you to produce a good work product. But if you have an over lingering, ever lingering feeling of anxiety, I'm no psychiatrist, but it's probably not a healthy thing to have. During my year and a half banking, and if I'm being very open even now, I don't remember the last time I've slept perfectly well. I think there's still that lingering mentality of what emails am I going to wake up to? What emails did I miss? Thinking about all the to-dos that I have to do, never going into a weekend with the secureness, the for sureness that I'll have it open. As I mentioned in previous videos, there's plenty of other bigger real world problems that triumph having to reply to emails and making a model on Excel. But I think banking gives you this toxic mentality of having constant anxiety. In a similar boat, because you're constantly surrounded by these type A individuals who also have their respective anxieties and their respective need to succeed and achieve great things, you become very short-fused and impatient about things not happening correctly, things being inaccurate, not getting responses right away, and realizing that the rest of the world don't behave like bankers and it's okay to not respond to things immediately. It's okay to let an email sit. You don't have to be available at 2.30 a.m. in the morning to build a PowerPoint presentation. These are all things that I think I could complain about all day long, but that would serve no purpose. It's more to the point that these are things that are long lasting impacts of even a year and a half in banking that I think I will carry throughout my life. And while there are definitely perks and benefits as I've explained before, I have regrets about starting my career in that way and having those mental effects last, even as I've transitioned from the role. Back to more tangible things, and these two relatively contrast each other, but I think they're in the same vein. One, I think you come out of banking 
not necessarily with a very specified skill set. And two, for the things that you do come out with specified skill sets, you're very pigeonholed into finance. And that's a problem if you aren't into finance. And I think I've very thankfully transitioned into a role that shied away from finance. But a lot of people, I think, go into banking with the mentality that you're going to learn very tangible business skills, skills that allow you to run businesses, evaluate businesses, which are somewhat true, especially at a M&A front. But I think a lot of the tangible skills that you come out of banking with are finance oriented. And if you're not interested in finance, if you're not a lifetime financer, a man of finance, it's not going to serve you as well as you imagine banking a jack of all trades role would be. I will say the skills that you do get are on the intangible side when it comes to the ability to work hard, the ability to manage multiple processes at the same time, the ability to soak in a lot of information and understand a wide variety of things as opposed to honing into one thing specifically. But I think if you want to be a specified expert in one thing, but you're not interested in finance, yes, banking gives you a good resume boost, banking gives you into doors, but you're not overly specialized in one route, especially if you're shying away from finance. And I think that is a cause for concern, especially when you compare yourself to others that have been in more specific roles for a year and a half, granted that they want to stay in those roles for a long time. I think lastly, this speaks more on a college level pre-investment banking. And I think this is probably true for a lot of high intense, high paying jobs nowadays. But I think banking, especially because the networking portion is so strong. And if you're in that banking bubble, everyone seems to be getting ahead. Everyone seems to be very intense in their pursuit of these roles. That's where you get the banking hardos, those that are on Wall Street Oasis all day, those that are obsessed with the bulge bracket or whatever, those that come out of the womb wanting to be bankers, those that have PE internships after second grade in pursuit of becoming an investment banking analyst. You sacrifice a lot of your college life, of your college career, being too focused on this future-oriented aspect of life. And your life almost gets absorbed with getting that banking role, constantly having to speak to current bankers, constantly having to be on forums, watching these dumb videos by Brian John, and just trying to break into this industry that means the world to you at that time. And you can make the argument that by putting in those times, by putting in that investment early on, it sets you up for life, while others might be partying or socializing, you are investing that time into something that's valuable. I think that's a very valuable argument. I think that those that are on the other side of things that enjoyed college a lot more might look back and say, I wish I was like blah, 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 and invested my time into networking and getting a job. But as someone that's on the after the matter of fact side of the fence, I, I do see a scenario where you're so obsessed with banking right off the bat, people that come in freshman year knowing that they wanna be bankers, all they do is look for that summer internship, network all day, feel drained, and when they're faced with failure and get rejected from their top firm or all firms and not succeed in breaking in, it becomes difficult. I think putting all your eggs in one basket and feeling like it's a do it or die situation, especially at such a young age, facing a high intensity, brutal industry probably isn't the most healthy thing to do. Today I reflected on regrets that I have in pursuing being an investment banking analyst. I think as I've always said before, if I had the chance to do it again, would I do it again? I think I would. However, I think it's good to reflect on past endeavors, the road that we've come and the road that we will go towards. Not that I'll ever pursue being an investment banking analyst for the first time ever again, but there are schemas of patterns of life virtues and life decisions and life decision making that I think through reflection, I can apply to future decisions and that really comes well with introspective thought that comes after the fact. As always, thanks for watching. If you guys are interested in talking to me one-on-one -on -one for 30 minute sessions, use the link below to sign up on Google Forms. I am streaming every Wednesday live at 7 p.m. Pacific and 10 p.m. Eastern now to answer any questions, talk about whatever I want, get to know you guys a bit better. Always good to reflect, I hope you guys Take the opportunity to reflect on your careers, your life, and I will see you guys next time. Let's go.